Joining me now is Ontario's interim NDP leader, MPP for Toronto, Dan Forth, Peter Tappins. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. You accused the Premier and ministers of lying. Why? Because they've been lying. They've been giving out stories that they're actually concerned about what's happening in education, when in fact they're setting things up to be undermined. They're taking away supports for the children that need that extra help in the classroom by driving education assistance away. They're not willing to give the support for kindergarten teachers. They're not willing to actually put in place a system that will keep skilled staff on the job so that we won't have disruptions in our schools the way we're starting to see in our healthcare system. Of course, they would argue that the disruption is not coming from them, it's coming from, from QP. Well, I, I would say that they are not being honest. Uh, they have been bullying, they've been intimidating, and frankly, by starving the education system of resources, they've undermined the ability of our schools to give our children the support, the one-on-one -on -one attention that they need. I don't think there's any question about that. Let's talk about the back-to-work legislation, the use of the notwithstanding clause. Explain to me why you don't think it is or should be used or is not being used here in a reasonable way. Well, as you probably know, this clause was meant to be used only in exceptional circumstances and not to be used on a almost uh, casual basis for labor negotiations. It's completely wrong to suspend people's constitutional rights when you're trying to get an agreement on what happens in the workplace. This is going to poison the atmosphere. This is going to take away rights from workers across Ontario. And frankly, I think it's going to make it even more difficult to get an agreement that will allow us to stabilize the situation in our schools and look after our children. So kids will be out of school on Friday, and if they don't have a deal, they could be out longer than that. I'm sure you understand the challenge for both parents and students after what they've been through with the pandemic. So what do you want to say to them? What I want to say to them is that the government has power in its hands today to settle this dispute. They could go to the bargaining table, make a, an offer that was fair, and get an agreement very quickly. The government has been stalling. It has been in trying to intimidate these workers, predominantly women. It could make a difference in the next few days and get this all settled. I'm not seeing them make the commitment to have that happen. I do see them making a decision to bully those workers as a way of approaching it. This is not gonna help our children in the long run. The government offering a raise, it's not very much of a raise, but it is a raise. We know CUPE was asking for something along the lines of 11.5%, so they're very far apart. Do you see the government's latest offer as completely unfair? I do. We're in a situation where many of these workers have to rely on food banks in order to ensure there's food on the table. We're in a situation where their wages have been frozen or raised only minimally for about a decade. We're seeing inflation going at six, seven, much as 8%. If you're offering them 1%, you're telling them that they have to take a wage cut. This does not make any sense at all. It's gonna drive people out of the schools and it's gonna make things much more difficult for our kids over the years to come. Peter Tabins, I've gotta leave it there, sir. I'm out of time, but thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much.